Hello everybody and welcome to EdWorks. Today we're going to do a one-day conversion of an ambulance to a camper. If you're wondering how that's possible, uh, I have a little picture up here and I just want to show you the interior of the ambulance and basically it's all about quality. There's generations of uh, adaptations that make these ambulances better and better year after year and what you're looking at here is the interior of the ambulance and the quality is quite high. So let's just start off with a tour. Okay, here we are inside the Horton, and this is basically the way we got it. So we have cabinets on the top, one little cabinet on the bottom. This space underneath the bottom is actually an uh, outside compartment. Uh, this space underneath this chair is actually a wheel well. The uh, space underneath the cabinet there is uh, kind of a utility cabinet there's an air compressor and an inverter in there and a battery charger what this represents is kind of the command station for the ambulance so there's a chair that is comfortable uh, underneath it is the air conditioning unit that runs off the engine um, above it is the desk and above that is a vacuum pump sensor and oxygen output those we won't be needing but uh, there's a control console and from the control console you can shut the heating cooling when the engine is running you can also turn on an inverter if you have one it also controls all the lights both inside and outside also at the station is the ambulance radio and then as you can see behind the seat that's your air conditioning there's two cabinets uh, next to the door that goes to the cab one is all the electronics and the other one is a lock box uh, which basically is just a small uh, 12 inch by 12 inch cabinet. Now below that is a bigger cabinet from, with an outside access and that's where the spare tire is uh, as well as quite a large cabinet. Here we have probably the most valuable uh, piece of real estate in the ambulance and that is uh, there are four shelves, well, actually five shelves with an outside uh, a door. And when you open up that door, you have access to the two shelves on top, the two shelves on the bottom, and then there's another shelf that's below the deck level uh, that uh, is available from the outside door only. Now, the beautiful thing about that is that you can use that to your advantage in the sense of uh, groceries or uh, clothes that come and go. Uh, and so basically, you pop that door open, and that's how you load and go uh, in the ambulance. So that I'd always call my uh, my uh, goods that uh, tend to change from trip to trip um, which is clothes and, and food now if I move over here uh, we get to the actual bench that runs alongside and then there's a cabinet in the corner and that's our rear doors so this bench is roughly about six feet uh, four long. Um, it, there's a space underneath it, so in the cabinet space below it, there's some space underneath it. Padded backrest here, and then up above is some uh, cabinets. And uh, uh, very nicely done. The ceiling has got fluorescent lights, it's got incandescent lights, it's got an air vent, uh, it's got a... <laughs> Uh, device actually to hold a uh, uh, IV bag um, so it's very well done one thing that's good to point out about the cabinets is that these cabinets are kind of special in that if you look at this cabinet here uh, there's sliders on it and so you can slide it to open and I'll slide it open but the beautiful thing is there's actually latches in here and both sides have latches and then the whole cabinet swings up and there's some hydraulic cylinders that don't have a lot of life in them anymore but you know the place we so have total access to the cabinets as they are and then the shelving is adjustable so when you look at these cabinets pretty sophisticated hard to improve on and i think that's what you'll find with any ambulance is that this ambulance has is second third fourth fifth tenth generation and they have things worked out very nicely as to how to make everything work, function, 
they're definitely have the durability issue handled. Uh, the wiring, very sophisticated wiring, uh, and it's all pretty impressive. When it comes to doing conversions, the problem with most campers is that the seats in a camper are quite uncomfortable. In fact, if you want a comfortable seat in a camper, you have to go sit in your car. Because those seats are designed to be sit in. The seat in a camper usually is a pad on the bottom, much like we have here. Pad on the bottom with a pad for a backrest at 90 degrees. Uh, very unnatural. Whereas this seat is contoured and slightly canted back. That seat goes forward in reverse. So... The one thing that's already here is a very comfortable place to sit. Also, it seems to be coupled with, let's call it the nerve center of the camper. Everything you need is basically at this site. So my goal would be to take that and leave it as is, not to adjust it, change it, do much. But I think it'd be nice with a wraparound table. So my goal is, is to come up with a table design, which is very unsophisticated, but basically covers up the, the stainless steel counter and then wraps around the seat so where you can just sit there and you have a table in front of you. This is the multi-function area of the, of the uh, ambulance in the, the future camper. So basically what we have is a padded seat. There's pads on both sides, pad on the back, end up into a little box on top here. There's a pad on the left, a pad on the right, and, and two on the back. This spot is 12 inches or 14 inches deep and it's uh, 24 inches wide. My goal with that is to take this, remove the padding, mount a refrigerator there. And I would like a top opening refrigerator, though that hasn't been determined. I do have a top opening fridge that I can put in there, but have a top opening fridge in there. And then this space on the top, both sides, is to take out all the padding or the padding that's necessary and put a shelf there and then on the top there would be a microwave and on the back side i'll run a spot uh cord down that I actually will be able to plug into that outlet so what i'm thinking is microwave on top fridge on the bottom if the fridge if we need a bigger fridge the fridge can actually stick out and i can just extend out the the deck that the fridge will sit on as far as i need it and the seat belts will be removed then here we have a seat with a table, in front of it a refrigerator, microwave up here, and we still have the last four feet of the camper that's been untouched. This is the part that I think is difficult. Where do you put a bed? And I've seen uh, many nice YouTube videos where people are quite clever and they cut out this cabinet or they cut out these cabinets over here. Um, I'm just impressed with the quality of these cabinets. Uh, so I'm not that interested in getting rid of anything. Um, so when I think of a bed, I think, well, we've basically got six feet, three inches here. It's not quite 24 inches wide, probably 20 and a half inches wide. Uh, the mattress, the um, foam in these uh, seats is a little stiff for a mattress, but I see this as a starting point. So my thoughts are is to take this space here and remove the padding and put in some other padding that would be comfortable to lay on and also extend the padding down to this end and use that as a bunk. Now this would be a single bunk. I have no illusions of, uh, of putting in two bunks here because frankly the space in here is quite tight and I don't know that this really qualifies for a two-person camper although as you know many people are doing that. Uh, however, I see that the enthusiasm is usually the uh, the solo uh, camper, and, and that's my goal. Um, just to point out a little feature here is that this little space here has got a drop-down for a, um, garbage. And if you just lift this up, there's your garbage, and then there's also another space to put some other things uh, in there. And I think actually that was meant to capture needles. So basically what my thoughts are is this will be a bed. Um, the seat over here will turn into the, uh, some of the microwave cooking and cooling properties. The chair that I'm in right now will have a wraparound uh, uh, bench top.
one of the things to look for in a camper is access to the cab and this has got a nice little door there's a latch on it it uh, pulls open and it actually neatly disappears and gets out of the way there's a safety latch and if you don't latch that it's going to be popping open but this gives you access to the cab and there you can see the other set of controls another radio uh, cell phone holder and then the rest of the material in the center console there is related to the air ride system this is the wiring cabinet and basically what we have here is a circuit board uh, that runs there's lots of relays solid state relays there's some power outlets power panels panels um, the cabinet is well lit got a great access to it uh, there's a fair number of fuses in here so this is kind of the nerve center of the system and what Horton does is that Horton uses this panel here so this panel controls that and there is an identical panel in the uh, in the cockpit and that also controls pretty much the same it functions now the panel of course in the uh, cab has all the ambulance features such as rotating beacons and sirens that have all been disconnected but they still exist so this is the basically the brains of the operation here's how you get a one-day build at our home improvement store you can buy plywood that is uh three quarters of an inch thick it's already pre-finished. The only thing you have to remember about that is that the finish is, is uh, tender and you got to protect it when you're cutting. So what I did is I put blue masking tape over all the edges before I cut them and basically cut uh, corners. I just wanted to round it off a little bit. And then on the ends here, that is raw wood. So what I did is I painted that with a little tiny brush uh, with lacquer and the beautiful thing about lacquer is it dries if it's warm it'll dry in 10 minutes if it's cool it'll dry in, dry in a half an hour but basically I was able to make this tabletop in one pass and get it ready here I have my tabletop mounted in position looks like the fit's gonna be pretty good um, what I did is I put a hinge on the inside here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in some tape along the top side of the hinge. Then I'm going to remove the hinge and drill out all the holes for the hinge. And then when I put it in, I'll be able to lift it up, lift the table up, get underneath there and screw the pre-drilled holes in for the tabletop. Okay, I got the hinge mounted to the edge here. So it's a piano hinge, about a 30 inch piano hinge. And when I started to mount the hinge along the backsplash of this desk, I realized that the backsplash is uh, solid aluminum. So I'll try to zoom in here a little bit, but you can see that these holes are serious. Um, the little screws aren't going to pull out, so I only put them in every other spot. And I think that that will work good. Hey, the desk is in. Uh, the hinge was a bear cat because I couldn't reach the screws, but... We got her done slowly but surely. Probably took an hour. And then this lifts up. And there's actually a little recess underneath there for papers and whatnot. And a place to lose wrenches and screwdrivers. So next up is to dismantle all the pads here. We're going to take off the right pad, the base pad, that pad, and... Uh, both uh, seat belts will come off and then we'll take off these back pads and we may leave the top ones up although I have to figure out a way to put a shelf in there so they'll probably come out and about a minute later we're looking like this what a transformation so now we're ready to look at putting something down to uh, hold a cooler after we clean up okay a few short minutes later we got the padding out and what a transformation this took now we have this space that's actually quite large so we want to put a shelf in the top for a microwave and we want to put a shelf in the bottom to hold a cooler refrigerator so let's get back to work okay the seats out and we put in a new bottom on here and it's hinged I just use the original hinge so you can get into the compartment down there 
and this will serve as a place to put the cooler. Okay, we have some holes in the wall, and we got a pack, so I picked up some of these black caps, and they're 5 16 and we'll just go ahead and find a spot, put that in there, snap right in, and although I should have got white, they look pretty good. Okay, the cooler's now installed, and there's... behind for the elements to work, the controls. I think it all's looking coming together pretty good. Okay the microwave is pretty straightforward. What I did is that the platform that I set the uh, refrigerator on, I made two of those and one of them is all set to be mounted in the uh, location above the fridge. So here we have the location uh, above the fridge and simply put in a couple of uh, one by ones along both edges and we'll screw in the bracket and we got ourselves a microwave compartment. Okay, the microwave's in place and I got a white bungee to hold it down and believe me that bungee isn't going to let it go anywhere. The bench by itself is a little bit too narrow so what I did is I went on Amazon and bought a memory foam mattress that folds into three sections. This is a wonderful uh, little mattress and I set it on top of the bench. Now as you can see from this side uh, the mattress overhangs the bench a little bit and because it's soft it's going to fold off the end so what I have to do is I have to build a bracket that will come up grab the edge of the mattress and hold it in place and so I took these measurements uh, and uh, wrote them right on the picture that I had taken of the overlap and then we went to our design software to figure out what I needed for boards. Okay, so this is my uh, step off. I need to add the bunk to my bench. So what I need to do is I need to come out two inches on the bottom to miss the pad for the bunk and the little latches for the bunk. And then once I get up to the level of the top of the pad, I need to go another two and a half inches. And that gives me my 24 inches for my mattress. I think for the build, uh, dimensional uh, lumber is the answer. So I'm thinking about just using plywood to do this. However, I have a little bit of an advantage. I came up with uh, some aluminum square stock that's three and a half inches tall and, or three and a quarter inches tall and two and a half inches wide. And I thought, I'll just attach my boards to that. So I kind of come up with this plan here. So I have my aluminum tube square stock. I'm going to attach a three quarter inch piece of plywood to the top of that. That's going to be 70 inches long. And then on the top of that, I'm going to have a two and a half inch piece. And I'm going to have another piece that's two and a quarter. I probably make that two and a half just for simplicity's sake. So it's going to be a 70 inch piece times two and a half. I need two of those and one at seven and a half, one of those. Okay, I got three boards. They're all 70 inches long. The wide one is seven and a half, the other two are two and a half. And so the next step is just to glue them up and attach my aluminum. So I set this up with a little bit of glue. I'm using Tight Bond, Tight Bond 2. Set this up for a little bit of glue and every six inches I put a screw and basically have it all set up with a lip. So this is what it looks like when it's done. The rail goes all the way down the end. You can see that the aluminum square tubing is what attaches to the side of the bunk and that just comes up and gives platform for some of the mattress and a little bit of an edge. It's all pretty much flush with the top of the bunk. Good news is these hatches still latch and open up. And what we have here is a still photo of the mount. Looks pretty good. And this is what it looks like with the mattress in place. And the mattress just is held in there snugly by the, the lip. If you still want to buckle in and use this as a seat, the thermofoam 
is still here. The seat belts still pull out and people can sit here. And so we haven't given up any functionality of the ambulance. I want to briefly talk about the sink. What we have up here is we just have this little space between two cabinets. It's got a nice uh, stainless steel top on it. And my goal with the sink is just to buy a product off the shelf. And here we have a Reliance sink. It's all one unit. It can be taken outside. It holds its own water uh, and it's quite functional. Uh, to use it, you pull it out of here and you put it wherever you want and use it either inside the cab or outside the cab. Usually water is kind of a messy deal anyway, so being able to take it outside is a great idea. The last item on the agenda is a bathroom. Now the camper is not intended to have a bathroom, however in case of emergency we got luggable loo. These uh, little units are, are very nice, uh, they work adequately. In case of emergency you really appreciate it and it fits right underneath the bed, so we got a great spot for it. We got a little time left for a little bit of what I call bling. Uh, we have a couple of uh, aircraft style tie downs. Uh, one I put on the side and one I put on the floor. The next few items are set into place with about six screws total. This is a very nice feature. It's a little holder. So this thing pops out and it twists and goes in whatever position you want. But essentially it will grab your phone and let you lie in bed and take advantage of just watching a little television at nighttime. Here at the workstation, we have a little fan that I put in. That's to help move a little air around for heating and cooling. In one of the side compartments, we have the compressor for the air ride. And above that, we have a vacuum pump and the charger. I bought a pure sine wave inverter 2000 watt unit and installed it. All the cabling was pre-run, so the cables from the battery housing were pre-installed and all you have to do is unplug that connector and plug it into the sine wave converter and you're in business. See, with that we kind of end up with the end of our one day build. Here we have a tabletop and a chair, our little control panel, fan for some cooling. Here's our refrigerator, top opening, microwave. There's our little portable sink and as I swing around to the rest we have our single bed and frankly we're in business let's go camping thanks everybody for spending these 23 minutes with us here at edworks i think our total build time was about a little over six hours but as you can not be surprised there was weeks of planning before we got started planning is always the hard part and hopefully this will stimulate you to take on a project like this and my encouragement is keep as much of the ambulance intact as you can uh, because there's a lot of quality there that kind of a shame to remove. I hope to talk to you soon. Finished the one day camper build. We got a few things to show you. No uh, new home is without its uh, housewarming gifts. And the first is a wise old doctor once wrote blah 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 blah. The second gift you get when you convert a camper is from a nephew who says if you ever get in a position where you need to look official, I got my EMS hat and my human organ duffel bag. So we are ready to park.